Good to see everybody here tonight. Let's greet each other in the name of Jesus.
Good evening. Good to see you. Glad to have everybody here. Thank you for coming out on this Wednesday evening. Thank you for not changing the locks while I was gone and letting me come back in. Appreciate that a whole lot. I want to thank David. Where's David at? He's on his way. Well, thank Pastor David for filling in for me this weekend. Had a, uh, a, a great few days. During those few days, uh, David and Stephanie treated us to a Tim Hawkins concert. Anybody know who Tim Hawkins is? If you don't, T-I-M, Hawkins, H-A-W-K-I-N-S. YouTube him. He's a Christian comedian. He, I tell you what, I have stages of laughter. I have, you know, I've heard some people say, I laugh till I peed. That's, that's not me. That's not my, that's not my thing. But I do laugh until my head hurts right back here. Bo does that to me a lot. It, but, but then I have one past that, I start coughing. I'm laughing so hard, I'm coughing. I couldn't hear half the show because I was <laughs> just, but it, it was good. Ch check him out. <clears throat> it, was, it was worth it. And Stephanie, thank you. We appreciated that, that treat. That was great. But uh, it is good to be back. It's good to be with my family. Okay. Uh, what we got coming up, brother? Go ahead and flash those up for us. Uh, youth night. Uh, this Sunday night. Okay. Uh, I know who's speaking that night. Come on out. Okay, uh, let's see here. Shoeboxes. Oh, okay, we got the month of April. Combs and washcloth. That's the same thing for me. Okay. Okay, all right. I got all evening, y'all. I, I got all evening. I, I'll wait. I'll wait. The month. The month of May, bananas and pencils. No, bandanas and pencils. Okay. Again, same thing for me. All right. Uh, and there'll be a box in the vestibule of the church. Uh, oh, JNS Cafeteria, go getters. When is that? Friday? Friday, leaving the church at 10 a.m. See a net or call a net with any questions. Okay. Is there a sign up sheet required for that? Come on, okay. Well, some, some, somebody will drive. There you go. It's not far. Uh, fellowship night, Saturday, April 20th. That's for the entire church, 530 to 730. They'll be playing some games, having some finger foods. It'll be a good time just to fellowship, okay? Uh, the uh, youth and uh, shoebox fundraiser cookout, Sunday, May 19th from 11 to 2. Be remembering that. Yes, if you know someone that might be interested in coming out and, and being with us that afternoon, uh, got cards to, to pass out, okay? All right. Uh, women's Bible study. It's one session. Angela Thomas, living your life as a beautiful offering, keeping a secret life. May 21st, 7 p.m. in the rec building, okay? There is a sign-up sheet. Jenny, do you need to say anything about that? Okay. Sounds good. Sounds good. Somebody told me tomorrow's a special day for you. You don't think it's so special? Happy birthday in advance, sister. All right. Uh, Vacation Bible School, Monday, July 8th through Friday, July 12th, with commencement on that Sunday. Be praying for that. Okay. Any other announcements? Anything I've missed? David, I did thank you while you were coming in for helping me out this weekend. Appreciate you so, so much. Really? It's, the, it's today y'all's anniversary? Oh, baby goats. Oh, okay. They're having kids. That's David, I do the jokes around here. Thank you very much. Uh, 
those are only be done by professionals, all right? But that was good. That, that was good. That was good. Well, happy anniversary, sister. Happy anniversary. All right. I am, I'm, to use Pastor David's words, I'm excited about the next few weeks. I was going to start something tonight, and uh, I want to follow up with the discussion that we started last week, but never really got to, I don't feel like we got to unfold it and really talk about it. So I want to talk about that tonight. And then next week, I want to explore uh, something that Bo brought up, a great question he had, where uh, uh, if I'm following you, brother, you were, trying to, you, were, you were talking about kind of the will of God. I want to get into that next week. But tonight, I want to talk to you about faith healers. We started that, but never, never got to finish it. Let me have a volunteer over here. Volunteer over here on this side. Thank you. Pass those out, please. Just a little something. If you want to take some notes, talk about faith healing. Faith healing. Okay. <clears throat> Now, before I even get into this, let, let, let me say this to you, church. I'm not here tonight to condemn anyone, nor am I here to condone anything, okay? Uh, this is one of those things where we can talk about it, we can debate it, and regardless of your view, we're still going to see each other in heaven, amen? Did everybody hear that? Okay. Yes. 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 Way above what we can visibly see, brother. Yes. Way above. Way above. Faith healing. Let's begin by reading in Luke. Luke chapter 4. Oh, you didn't get a paper? Did we skip this section here? Did we make enough copies? Just the right amount. Good deal. Okay. Thank you, sir. We got a few more. Clay, hold on to these just in case anybody else comes in. Okay, brother. Thank you so much. All right, we're going to be reading Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4, beginning at verse 31. I'll be reading out of King James tonight. Okay. Uh, Jesus has been preaching, and he's, he's uh, going, going out of the city. And he says, and he came down to Capernaum, a city of Galilee, and taught them on the Sabbath day. They were astonished at his doctrine, for his word was with power. And in the synagogue there was a man which had a spirit of an unclean devil, and cried out with a loud voice, saying, Let us alone. What have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Art thou come to destroy us? I know thee, who thou art, the Holy One of God. <laughs> Every demon knows Jesus. They've met. Amen. And Jesus rebuked him, saying, Hold thy peace. In any of your language, that's shut up. And come out of him. When the devil had thrown him in the midst, he came out of him and hurt him not. And they were all amazed and spake among themselves, saying, What a word is this? For with authority and power he commandeth the unclean spirits, and they come out. And the fame of him went out into every place of the country round about. Verse 38, And he arose 
out of the synagogue and entered into Simon's house. Who's Simon? Peter. Peter. Okay, there you go. And Simon's wife's mother, Peter's mother-in-law, was taken with a great fever, and they besought him for her. And he stood over her and rebuked the fever, and it left her. And immediately she arose and ministered unto them. We'll talk more about that in just a minute. Now when the sun was setting, all they that had any sick with diverse, various diseases brought them unto him, and he laid his hands on every one of them and healed them. And devils also came out of many, crying out and saying, Thou art Christ, the Son of God. And he, rebuking them, suffered them not to speak, for they knew that he was Christ. Everybody say amen. amen. Now that shows us one thing right off the bat. There's a lot of people out there that believe that any time you're sick, there's a demonic force behind it. Jesus has demonstrated. The Word says some people were sick. Some people had demons. There was a difference, okay? So don't, don't be looking for demons and the demonic under everything, under every bush, okay? Sometimes we just get sick, okay? It, it happens, okay? We spoke last week about faith healers for just a few minutes. Like I said, I don't think we had enough time to really get into it. Has anybody here ever been to a healing service? Anybody here? Ariel? Yeah, we've, we've spoke of it. Any, any, anybody else? I've watched, it on TV. watched it on TV. I think most of us have watched it on TV. Okay, now let, let me say this again. I'm not here to condemn nor condone. I'm sitting neutral tonight, okay? You believe what you want to believe, but we're going to talk about some stuff here, okay? Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. that's biblical that's biblical and we'll, we'll talk about that too okay what I want to talk about this evening is about four differences between Jesus's healing that we just read about and that we can read various other accounts throughout the gospels just like that and modern day faith healers okay now if you've never if you've never experienced a faith healing service I would encourage you to go online, check it out, okay, and, and you'll see the good, the bad, and the ugly, all right, you'll, you'll see it all. But I want to give you four things, four notes here. When Jesus healed, Jesus healed instantly. Jesus healed instantly. Verse 39 says, as he stood over her and rebuked the fever, and it left her, and immediately... She arose, okay? Peter's mother-in-law didn't slowly or gradually get better, okay? Uh, she was healed immediately and instantly. I have seen and read about some of the faith healers on television tell the sick. I, I was watching some this afternoon. Uh, this one guy, he healed this little old lady in a wheelchair and told her to stand up. And he said, you've been healed. How do you feel? And she said, my hips still hurt. And he said, give it some time and you'll get better. <laughs> That's not the way Jesus healed. Okay? When he healed, he healed instantly. Instantly. Okay? As we look through the Gospels, we can see that all of Jesus' healing was instantaneous, okay? The woman with the issue of blood was healed instantly. The ten lepers were healed instantly. Jairus' daughter was healed instantly. The blind, the lame, the deaf, all healed instantly. Jesus told none of them, you'll be okay in a few days. Go on, take your vitamins and say your prayers. Okay? He didn't do that. They were healed instantly. Okay. Number two, Jesus healed completely. Jesus healed completely. We'll look at verse 39 again. 
And when you stood over her and rebuked the fever, and it left her, and immediately she arose and ministered unto them. That word minister there means served them. Okay? Uh, she didn't lay there and go, hmm, I think I feel better. No, she got up immediately and prepared a meal for Jesus and the disciples. Okay? L listen, if you can go from a fever to fixing dinner for everybody, just like that, you've been healed completely. Completely. It's gone. Okay? She didn't need a time of recuperation. She got it up instantly and resumed her duties around the house. Let me read this to you. A well-known faith healer by the name of Kenneth Hagin. Now, he's gone now. Anybody ever heard of Kenneth Hagin? Yeah, that's old time, okay? He proclaimed at one of his healing meetings that a man was healed of his deafness. However, after the meeting, the man still couldn't hear. Here's how Kenneth Hagin rationalized this, what happened. He told the man, he says, if you don't have enough faith in you to hold on to the healing you received, the devil will steal it away. Okay? Now that's bad, folks, because not only did this poor man leave unhealed, he left feeling guilty over his unfaithfulness. He's like, man, it's my fault. There must be something wrong with me. I don't believe enough. I don't have enough faith. Okay? Uh, I'm going to go ahead and say this. This isn't in my notes. Uh, there's a special place in Hades for people who use the gospel to hurt people and, and, and take them down a bad path, okay? There's some, something wrong right there, okay? Number three, Jesus healed everyone who came to him. <coughs> Jesus healed everyone who came to him. Verse 40, Now when the sun was setting... All they that had any sick with diverse, diverse diseases brought them unto him, and he laid his hands on every one of them and healed them. Okay? Let me tell you something that maybe you don't know about a lot. I'm not going to say all. About a lot of the faith healers that you see on television. Most of those people... It's a business. It's, it's, it's a prosperity gospel. Uh, and Donna, you're right. Your, your healing sometimes depends upon the seed you sow. And uh, I was watching another video just recently, and I won't say his name, but if I did, you would know who it is. Uh, one, of, one of these faith healers says, everybody can be healed. I'm like, man, that's what Jesus did. That's good. He said, but make sure and fill out your checks and make them out to this ministry. And he said, if you're using a credit card, make sure and write your name at the top of your little thing there that, so that we can keep up. I was like, oh, man, you, you blew it. You blew it, okay? But these people, they, they travel with a staff, people, a group, okay, an entourage, and what you don't see on television is, is that they are screening people behind the stage, okay? And they're picking and choosing who does and who doesn't get up on the stage, okay? With Jesus, that's not the way it was. Anybody that came to him, they, they got healed, okay? A physician by the name of William Nolan, he wrote a book entitled Healing. A doctor in search of a miracle. This is a medical doctor. He was sick and he was, he was, he was looking to be healed. And, and let me tell you, folks, you get sick enough, you have somebody you love enough, you, you'll, you'll do what it, what it takes, won't you? How many of you got kids? You'd do anything for them kids, wouldn't you? And if they were sick, if they were somebody, hey, there, there's a healing service going on, you, 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 you know, I know you're a good Baptist, but you're liable to go. Amen? I'm not saying I wouldn't. 
Okay? I'm just saying. But he, he wrote the book, Healing a Doctrine in Search of a Miracle. He went to healing services, and he went to one in particular conducted by a famous faith healer, and he, and he wrote that this. He says, I watched people leave the service in their wheelchairs crying. I saw parents carrying crippled children in their arms away weeping because they were not chosen or were too far back in the line to get on stage. Okay? Again, there's a special place for people like evangelists. Okay? Number four. Jesus healed observable sicknesses. Observable sicknesses. When I watch the faith healers on television, they always seem to be healing people with infirmities that can't necessarily be seen. Have you ever noticed that? Uh, and I'm not saying it's not real. I'm, I'm, I'm not saying their infirmities aren't real. But it's always, it's my, 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 I got back issues, or I got a heart problem, or I got headaches, or, or something like that. It's, it's never, well, I can't see. Or I can't, I can't walk, I can't, I can't hear. It's, it's something else. Jesus, we saw here, he takes fevers out of people. He healed leprosy. <coughs> leprosy. You can see it. It's tangible. It's real. You cannot fake it. Do you think there's people out there faking back aches and back problems now? Yeah. Think that's a possibility? Yeah. Get your little social security there. Did, did I say that out loud? Uh, w w withered hands. He healed that. He made the lame to walk, the blind to see. Tangible, observable infirmities is what Jesus healed. He didn't have people come up on the stage, you know, I've had a backache since I was four years old, and it just, and he, you know, uh, somebody touches them, and, and they're, they're, they're healed miraculously. Let me ask you this. Do you think that it's possible that some of those people might even be employed by some of these people? No, you're right, David, that would never happen. Yes, that, that's very prominent. It does happen. It does happen. Okay? Now, here's the question I have for you tonight. Can God heal through these faith healers? Can he? Who said he can do anything? Thank you, sister. He can. He can do anything, and I'm sure he has. I'm sure that some of these famous preachers, God has used them, and people have actually really got healed instantly, completely, of an observable sickness. I'm, I'm sure he has. God can use whomever he wishes, even the devil himself, to accomplish his purpose. Amen? I am going to be the last one to put limits on God. I just refuse to do that. Okay? If God wants to use them, he can. Okay? If you're sick and you hear of a healing service and you want to go, by all means you go. You go. I'm not going to stand in your way. Who, who knows what may happen to me one day? Okay? Uh, and I wouldn't dare speak for God and say, well, God does this and God does that. And blah, blah, blah. I, I have no authority to do that. God can do what he wants. What I have to go to is what Kim referred to when we first started. James chapter 5, verse 14. Is any sick among you? There may be somebody here tonight that's sick having a health issue, a health problem. Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil 
in the name of the Lord. Has anybody here ever been anointed with oil before in the church? Raise your hand if you have. I have. I have. I've called on the deacons to, to anoint me with oil when I was sick. Okay? And the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he hath committed sins, they shall be forgiven of him. Confess your faults one to another, and pray one for another that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Amen? Amen? There's power in prayer. And if anyone goes to a healing service and gets healed, know this. That pastor, that preacher, that evangelist did not heal anyone. Did you hear me? The Holy Spirit did the healing. David and I will pray over you. You, you come down on Sunday morning. You come down on Wednesday night. It don't matter. You come anytime. David and I will pray for you. We will lay hands on you. We will agree with you in prayer. We will ask for God to heal you. But David and I cannot heal one person. I can't heal him, and he can't heal me. We can't heal ourselves. Amen? Yes, ma'am. Amen. Yeah. Oh. Oh. My mom, my mom taught me and my brother to pray for those who were less fortunate than us. Uh, if, we saw, if we saw someone who, who couldn't walk or someone who was mentally challenged or something like that, you didn't make fun of that person. Brenda Melton, man, she, she get on the men's room. You don't, you don't do stuff like that. And to this day, we, we were out of town this weekend, and we were at a restaurant, Tammy and I, having dinner, and I saw a young man, and I could tell he was mentally challenged. And I'm not bragging on myself. I'm not. Please don't misunderstand what I'm doing. I'm not doing one of these. But sitting there at the table, I'm eating, and I just started praying. I ain't told Tammy about this. I just started praying, Lord, heal that young man. Heal that young man. Please, in the name of Jesus, heal him. Now, did he? I, I don't, I'll never know. I'll never know. Maybe when I get to heaven, God may introduce us. I don't know. That's a good point, Annette. Pray without ceasing. Okay? You see people, you're surrounded by people who are sick. There's people in here tonight who were sick. Pray for them. You don't have to tell nobody. God knows it. And he might just be using you as a vessel for prayer. No. Did I see a hand up? Okay. All right. Uh, here's two things we need to remember. We'll, we'll see more from God if we expect more from God. But that, that's worth writing down. Because I didn't come up with that. <laughs> the Lord gave that to me. We'll see more from God if we'll expect more from God. There's a theological term for that. It's called faith. Faith. We'll see more from God if we'll expect more from God. And, and number two, the, the, I, I watch these faith healers and, and they declare, God doesn't want you to be sick. There's one of them on TV and I really like him. I do. His theology stinks. But I think he's just a cool guy. He makes me laugh. He's very funny. Uh, but one of his things is, is, God doesn't want you to be sick. And he'll tell you, I hadn't been sick since I was 16 years old. And he's 80-something years old. Hadn't been sick. Never get sick. And yeah, he, he, he believes that. I think he's lying, but he believes that. <laughs> Again, I'm not here to condemn anybody. If that man says he hadn't been sick since he was 16 years old, 
more power to him. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. And I kind of agree with God doesn't want us to be sick to a degree because it wasn't God's plan for us to get sick. Do you know that? It wasn't. Sickness came to man after the fall in the Garden of Eden. But God does allow sickness to come and uses it to accomplish his purposes. Sometimes we pray for healing and it doesn't come not because God can't but because it's not in God's will which we're going to talk more about next week people told me back in 2001 I was just a young preacher so if you'll just pray for your mama if you'll just pray for her if you'll just have faith God will heal her and, and let me tell you folks I had faith I mean, I, 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 I was stupid faith. Yes, God's going to heal my mama, and I talk to people, you've got to declare it and name it and claim it and do it and blah, and blah, and I did all that faithfully. Mom's buried right out here. She did get healed. She did get healed. It just wasn't on this side. But she's a whole lot healthier than I am today. Amen. Whether we're healed, remain sick, or taken to our heavenly home depends on what glorifies God the most. Okay? It hurt mine and Tim's hearts, but it glorified God. Her passing did. Okay? Does that make sense this evening? Again, I just want to talk to you a little bit because I, I thought we did, really didn't get to talk about it enough last week about faith healing. Okay, now I'm going to take a poll. Is that we're all... Huh? He's still here. Yeah. Yep, he's still here. Thank you, brother. How many of you believe in faith healing? I, I, that's a trick question. Yeah. How many of you believe in faith healing? Every hand in here ought to come up. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Okay. He can do anything. He can do anything. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, it was a trick question. <laughs> You're the one to call it. Are you? You're the one to call it. Amen. Okay, any questions, comments, concerns? Okay, give me a comment. y'all my I gave you a little testimony last week about wire in my leg and Irene Haynes praying over me next morning it was I mean not even a red spot on my leg it was gone I, I the only way I can explain that is that's it because I mean yeah yeah a anybody else Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. And, and on the other hand, 
I believe there's people that actually get healed. I, 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 can, I can see both. Okay? I can see both. I'm not, I'm not trying to, again, I'm going to say it again. I'm not condemning. I'm not condoning you. Okay? Yes, ma'am. Oh, Ariel, she, I think I saw her first. I, 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 yes, ma'am. Uh, the, the isolation battle is actually. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and yeah, I'm not denying Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. talked about being in a small room and, and, and people getting healed. Somebody asked one of these famous, again, I could say the name, but I won't, uh, faith healers, if you can heal all these people, preacher, why don't you go to the hospitals? His reply, not enough money. Yet. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Comment was more on this pastor's comment, not, not, not. I understand what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. It's like God's will. Yes, ma'am. You, you have a question. Go ahead. Good question. I, I, I have a feeling that, that maybe there'll be a whole different heavenly language and that there probably will be heavenly names, but we'll still know each other. You know, yeah, yeah. we'll be known as we are known. Yeah, but but yeah, that, that, that's possible. Great question, though. Very good. Anybody else? Yes, ma'am. When we get saved, uh-huh. we get saved from the deal. Mm-hmm. When we get saved, we were saved. Right. But are we not healed from something that it's not? I'm thinking in, in the scripture where it says, I'm going to make you new. Mm-hmm. So. I, I'm, not, I'm not sure I'm following you, Kim. I'm sorry. You, you, I'm a dude. You have to paint me a picture. You know. You're talking about right now. No, I'm talking about the day we get saved. Okay, okay, the day we get saved. Yeah. You know, I can take you back yeah. years ago. Yeah, right, right, right. Right. And we were in my heart and 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm saved from hell. Right. Did he not heal me from something? He healed you from your sin. Now, now you still, we will still sometimes suffer the consequences of our sin, but you've been healed from that iniquity, that separation. Am I making sense? And am, am, am I fine? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I hope I answered your question. Sort of. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I agree. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, sanctification. It, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, each, each day, we're becoming more like Christ. If, if we're staying faithful, you know. Yes, sir. sure that was just a popular thought back then and and quite possibly some people who had epilepsy did have a demon but Jesus just demonstrated in our scripture that not everyone who was sick had a demon in them but some did okay so, yeah. yeah right He's, yeah Thank, thank God our, yeah, thank God we're, we're, we're advancing more and more and more. You, you know, we can, we, especially as old folks, we can look back to the good old days. Some of things weren't too good. Amen. If you're going to be sick, if you're going to be sick, today's a good day to be sick, not 50 years ago. Amen. I, I mentioned my mother tonight. They're doing things right now with breast cancer that they couldn't do in 2000. I mean, it's just, it's amazing. Okay? So we praise God for that. Right here, it's for you guys. Right here. Or probably we talk about healing tonight. And we know that healing comes from no man. It comes only from you. So Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, we pray for Caden. I pray, Lord God, that you have your will and your way in that young man's life. And I pray that in the days and weeks and months to come that you would just do something marvelous. Not for him, but for your glory. Use him as a father to show people how great you are, how powerful you are, who you are, and what you can do. I pray that you would fill that little boy with your Holy Spirit and he's ready to understand it. That you'd make him a mighty man of God and use him in incredible ways. Ways that none of us here can even imagine. I pray for healing, Father, for Caden. In Jesus' name we pray. Somebody else had a hand up over here. Who was it? Anybody? Or was that just? Yeah, yeah.
We just, we just want out, Donna. I just want out. I'm in trouble. I'm sick. Just, just, just fix me, Lord. Just fix me. And he's saying, hang on. I got something for you out of this. I got something I want to show you. And, and sometimes we just want to skip through that. Great point. Amen. Amen. All right, folks, we are out of time. Let me go through the prayer list.